All right, this, this video is for people that are thinking of buying a command radio from eBay. And I'm going to explain the condition of these things. Now, they originally were $12 each. And there's several different frequencies. There's several different companies that made them for World War II. And uh, this is a top cover for one that's from the uh, Signal Corps. It's made by Westing Electric. This is the top cover. Goes on here. Has trouble getting in there right now because uh, I have a tube in there. Uh, that's an extra converter tube uh, for one of my circuit ideas. Uh, but here's how the top looks on a silver one. All right, these things could be missing when you buy the radio on eBay. Now, this is a bottom plate. That's what a bottom plate looks like. Okay, you want to understand what you're looking at. A lot of times on eBay, this is all you'll see. That's it. You can see the tuning caps in here. Sometimes this plate's missing. What you're looking at there is a radio that's been salvaged, uh, parts salvaged. Uh, back here, these are four shock mounts for a, a dynamotor. And uh, a lot of times they're missing. And this, this connector, this is for uh, three banana jacks, three miniature banana jacks. This will be missing. There might be a connector here that doesn't belong on the radio. It's been bodged. Okay? It's not an original radio. Now, looking over the cabinet, you might find there's an extra hole up in the front that someone's put in the radio. There might be an extra hole on the side. And that's because the person was too lazy to make a plate to put the controls. This is the BFO on, which ground, grounds out when it's on. This is a, uh, a 50K pot, which goes to ground at maximum. And then uh, your earphone jack. Okay? And you got to really understand the radio from the outside on eBay. They'll show you pictures. Now, along the bottom, along the very bottom of the radio, are the bolts that hold on the bottom plate. Okay? There's a bunch of them, these studs. If you see a picture and you don't see screw heads in those holes and you don't see a plate in the pictures, you're going to get something like this. Okay? And um, the other thing they bodge a lot is, uh, let me get this in the right way for me. Looking from the bottom, this is the front tuning cap. This is the BFO right here, okay? And uh, this one over here, let me look at it, make sure I'm right. Yeah, okay, BFO and um, audio output transformer. This is a choke for the dynamotor. You might find all three of these gutted. All right, now, these have been, I've ground off the lip. Uh, when they build these, these they call them flower pot, flower pot capacitors. They actually roll the edge over onto this mica piece. Now, I've ground that off. I've lifted that mica off. I've heated these up. The beeswax came out. I gutted it. I put a new capacitor inside, closed it back up, and sit it, put it back in this radio. All right, now, these are... This, this, this could be missing too. This are your three coils. Your oscillator coil, uh, the tuning one for the, uh, the RF, and then the, the RF amp. But these three are necessary for the radio to operate. They could be missing. Also, the front plate on the radio. This front plate could be missing. Okay? Not all radios come with them. Some have a plug-in module. So back here, there's a, there's a whole case in here that allows uh, the module to be plugged into. That could be missing. See, what the game is on eBay is they take the pieces out to make a complete one, and then they sell you the, the parts. And uh, the odds are of you ever recapping the radio and building a power supply are so rare, 
they're not going to get caught. And if they do, you, you do catch them, they'll take money off or they'll tell you to send it back. And sending it back is more trouble than it's worth. But you need to learn what to see. You want the BFO coil in the radio. You don't want to gut it. You, you want the audio output transformer in there. You, all you have to do, you, you don't even have to actually change the tap. You can to get more efficiency. And then back here, I've shown you this before. This is a cigar box with a speaker in it. And there's a, a filament transformer in there that's used as an audio impedance matching transformer. You put the black wires, which normally go to the 110, they come out to the back wire, out of the back of this, all right, over, over to the radio. That's the high impedance. The secondary side of the uh, transformer, which usually writes lights filaments, that goes to the speaker. So now, all you have to do is move this from radio to radio. If you use uh, a 1 8 inch um, jack, okay? If not, you got to buy, um, I like an adapter. I have an adapter for this. I can make it quickly into a quarter inch on some of my radios. But the radio, as it comes from eBay, it is possible it will work if you have a power supply. Now go back and look at my, uh, my power supply videos, okay? You got to have a power supply. And then once you get the power supply, uh, you can recap some of these capacitors. Now one of these in here is across the, the cathode of the oscillator. So the radio might tune part of the band and then cut out. And that's telling you this cap is leaky. I believe it's this one. Anyway, most of these caps are going to be leaky. The radio might still work. But it won't work as well if, if you recap it. Now I have enough of these radios. And uh, to, to know, to, I've, I've worked on enough of them to, to, to understand I'm pretty good. Because they're a little bit different than an AA5. But close enough. Now here's a piece of, of, of uh, uh, ice maker tubing for uh, a refrigerator. Now it fits in here on the spline nice and tight. All right. So now you can tune the dial. And in this case, this one has a, uh, a quarter inch shaft which goes into the knob to make my own knob, custom knob. Because uh, the knobs they sell that are original to these radios, they call the local knob, or they could be out on like a speedometer cable. Uh, they're, they're over 50 bucks. Okay. Uh, I mean, I can get one of these radios running, up and running for about 40 bucks for myself. Uh, get the caps off eBay to recap it. Uh, I've, in my past videos, I showed you my power supplies. But I want you to understand, when you're buying something on eBay, uh, you might get something like this. Now, I bought this sort of as a joke. Uh, and I recapped it. And I got it all working. But the guy had a giant, a giant switch for the BFO coming out of the side. He had a volume control sticking out the front. He could have put it in the plate, but he didn't. And uh, that's what you're going to get. You get a lot of bodge stuff on, on, on eBay. And uh, I've never seen one where they messed with the IF cans. See, each, each one of these radios has a different frequency IF. They're not 455. All right, that's the first thing you got to get out of your mind. And then uh, uh, if you get a hold of a good manual that's up on the Internet, they actually show you where the wires go. Expand it out. This is all cramped in, but they actually show you the wiring of this radio as a pictorial. Then they also show it as a schematic. You got to look for these things. All right. And a lot of people, I go look at the conferences and, and uh, these radios, they're popular, then they're not popular. But when they came out in the 50s, they were $12.95 each. Now you can spend uh, anywhere from $59 to over $300. And uh, what's really cool about them is like this one here does 80 meters. It's it's a BC 454. It does three to six mega cycles. All right. Now, in my case, I have this. I have a, a converter unit. I showed you this on another video. This is a converter unit. I take out the second IF, which is 6SK7. You stick this in, 
and now this produces now in this case this isn't doesn't produce a 455 anymore I changed the crystal to a, a 1 kilohertz crystal or a 1 megahertz crystal alright you put a 1 megahertz crystal it's also called a 1 a thousand a thousand one kilohertz a thousand kilohertz or a 1 mega cycle or megahertz crystal and that produces uh, instead of 455 it produces 415 kilohertz IF and I can use this as a they call it a, a, a Q fiber so this radio this radio becomes more narrow anything you pick up on this dial here uh, like say I just checked CHU Canada is not coming in good right now but say you have to turn this knob a complete half turn back and forth to get rid of CHU Canada that's how wide it is but when you come over off the this this third converter or second converter thirds over in here uh, it gets so narrow it's just you just move this just a tiny bit so the Q fiber is actually working and this is a beacon radio uh, it does what the heck uh, 250 kilohertz wait it's on the front 100 190 kilohertz to 5 uh, 550 kilohertz which is the AM broad, bottom of the AM broadcast band and uh, yeah it does make a difference okay but my my uh, goal was to create this unit uh, I did like I said I changed the crystal from a 970 kilohertz crystal to a 1000 kilohertz crystal which is one megahertz uh, because I was getting a really bad bird uh, whistle noise up in the uh, the 80 meter band and by switching the crystal to a, um, a, a thousand kilohertz uh, it became a lot nicer the band is much quieter it, it's working really good I'm really happy with it basically I invented something that should have been done 70 years ago okay and I kept saying to myself why didn't somebody do that well it bothered me enough I went and did it but there are also knobs these old radio knobs I have a spline inside here and they they will work on this radio also all right but this ice maker tubing works really good that's my idea okay there are other ones guys that tell you to glue on glue a piece of uh, copper tubing on with D duco cement or whatever it is this is the way to go this ice maker tubing uh, is sold at Lowe's or Home Depot uh, by the foot okay and uh, that's I had some of it from the CNC uh, machines that I had and I tried it worked perfectly that's that's how I fixed the problem but uh, yeah this has to be at 415 which is right there and then this gets converted down at night I can listen to the hams uh, if you got code uh, instead of hearing three code guys at once you only hear one that's what why you want to be more narrow more selective okay it's one thing to be able to pick the station up it's another thing to separate it from something that's close by so you got sensitivity you got selectivity but be very careful when you buy stuff on eBay uh, I break out in laughter every so many every few days uh, you see the bodge work like they had a, um, uh, a, a BC 946 which does AM broadcast band and it's kind of rare and there was one up there and the guy goes it's untouched well on the bottom I noticed right away up in this position right here let's see we get into the camera oh it had to hook that a million to one but it did it um, this is the audio output transformer uh, and you'll see we're in the camera you see a, a transformer sitting up there not even screwed in but I can tell by looking at the side views of the radio and what screws are missing or what bolts you want to call them bolts uh, are missing that the the audio output transformer has been touched or they've taken out the BFO for whatever reason which is really stupid because this BFO unit uh, is basically a product detector you don't have to once you tune the the BFO with this little screw it's fine for um, ham radio in other words all you have to do is turn to tune the frequency on like like clarify you just tune it and it it clears up and it's done you don't have to keep touching the BFO uh, on a lot of older shortwave radios too once you have to cut back the RF gain and that's because the way the uh, the BFO is added into the last IF 
it's added in with uh, a twisted piece of wire. It's called a gimmick. And uh, it really doesn't mix that well. Where these have uh, an actual um, grid where the, the uh, oscillator, the BFO oscillator goes into the radio. And then one of the detector diodes that's built into the tube is where the, the uh, signal comes in. And they mix together in the electrons in the tube and they produce the sideband tone or what you're going to listen to or they produce the, the demodulated tone that you want to hear. So the radio works very well uh, picking up sideband. And uh, it's just such a small radio. The problems I've told you before with these radios is you're going to have to recap it. You might get lucky and it will work. But the other thing is the power supply. All right, power supply will be next. Then the knob, I've told you, uh, ice maker tubing. Don't don't follow anybody else's stupid advice, hammering a brass tube on there or a copper tube and then cementing it. And that's causing the radio to be uh, bodged. Okay, so if you want to resell the radio, somebody might spot that. You're going to lose a, a, a good customer. All right. And as you can see, I have these radios have my uh, my super duper uh, <laughs> power supply in here. Here's my original power supply for them. But it's nice working with the radios, and each one has a power supply on it. And they're isolated from the line. And uh, I think that's about it now. You've got to be very careful. And, of course, once you buy one of these radios, and you get, it, you get one that's bodged, or it's been missing parts, you're going to learn very quickly. Now, this one here... I don't even think it was $25 with shipping, and I bought it, and it, uh, I had to rewire the, the, um, the filament circuit had been rewired for 12 volts, and I rewired it uh, back to 24, and, you know, like I said, they had the giant, it, it was, what happened to this poor baby was somebody got a hold of one of those mod books and did all the mods in the mod book. I was lucky they didn't take the BFO, uh, uh, BFO coil out or the uh, audio output, and then some of them will take this, this, this choke, this choke here. Let me make sure it's in the frame. Oh, 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 oh. right, right here. That's a choke to get rid of the um, uh, the dynamotor whine to prevent it from going in or out of the radio onto the other radios. Because in an aircraft. These things are stacked in racks, and uh, in this case, this one, this one here is, uh, I told you, it's for 80 meter handband, three megacycles to six. There is some international broadcasts on there. Uh, CHU Canada is on there, uh, and then this one is a beacon for landing for the aircraft, and then I also have the BC-4455, four, five, five, which is from six megacycles or 6 megahertz up to 9.1 megahertz. So that one would go next to this one in the aircraft, okay? Uh, they broke it up. And that's what's really nice about it. The radio is really small. Uh, when you get tired of it, it's easy to put it away somewhere. And uh, it's it's the coolness of radios. Of tube radios, I'd say this is one of the coolest radios because it was made as part of the war effort. And a lot of them have these nice plates on it. And this was a Western Electric. Uh, like I said, there's, uh, I think, um, Boot and Radio made them. There was like five different companies, maybe more, that actually made them for the war effort. Some, pe some people collect these radios just with the different tags. Uh, I collected it because I never seen one of these before. I was to a lot of ham flea markets, and there was a lot of junk piles there, and I never, I never realized that these little square things, to me, this looks like a signal generator. And I never paid any real attention to them. And then as I was starting to get out of radio uh, a few months ago, or maybe a year ago, I saw somebody mention one of these radios. Uh, I think it was the BC-348 uh, or 4. Well, anyway, this other big one. And I bought one of them. And then I noticed someone mentioned one of these is being used for a Q-Fiber with it. And I started investigating these. And uh, of all the fun, I think you could have the most fun with the three to six, uh, up around six megacycle at night, there's Radio Cuba, uh, WHRI or whatever it is. Um, you get a lot of different stations on this that are still left on shortwave. And at night, 
these frequencies, the lower band, 80 meter band, it's it becomes more active. All right, right now if I turn this thing on, it's just my computer behind me noise. But oh, I put my speaker in. But yeah, you make up your speaker box with it with it um, a transformer in it, and that'll that'll give you the ability to uh, operate the radio. Should be coming up any second now. More volume. Now with this configuration I have, this signal's going from this radio and coming in here at four four hundred and fifteen kilocycles. And anything, wish I could get. No, CHU Canada is not coming through. And don't forget, there's a little antenna trimmer on these. Sometimes before I do a video, I make sure I'm receiving something, but not today. But uh, yeah, it's a cute, it's a cute little hobby. Doing those, and I've showed you my trans, my uh, power supply, in depth how I put them together, and uh, that'll that'll clear one ho uh, hurdle for you, using the uh, tubing for the uh, ice maker, that'll solve your your uh, knob problem, you know, because you might not get one of these old TV uh, radio knobs, you know, someone figured out where to get these, and they were selling these at one time, dollar uh, fifty. Good luck trying to find them now. So, ice maker tubing, they'll get you by. You're going to have to take this um, tuning capacitor apart and oil it. Uh, use real fine, uh, like penetrating oil or that. You know, blow it out, brush it out, be very careful with it. You have to take it out. And this dial has a big nut on the outside. This big square thing is a nut. You can use a, um, a socket on it, you click it loose, and then there's a pin. There's a metal pin. That goes from this dial into the hub and you got to very gently wiggle this off there's a lot to this radio that's why when i see people buying it i'm like uh, on ebay and they're they're betting against each other the thing's never going to get rebuilt i know it ain't okay and yes there are guys that have uh, rebuilt the radios they're on uh, youtube and there are people that have actually taken the tubes out and uh, transistorized them or put fet transistors in them and uh, to me, I like the original radio, you know. Uh, and like I said, I can't put the I can't put the lid on right now because the tube the tube sitting in that socket is making it too high. But you know, you got all little cute little uh, metal notices on it. The old old World War II, you know. It's not done on there with paint or anything. It's it's a, a little tag, and uh, that's interesting too when you see the tags on them. And most of the radios. Uh, you want to make sure you see one of those tags because there are people that collect these tags. So the guy who's put the piece of junk on eBay, he's stolen the tab off the radio. And if you don't know to look for certain things, you're going to learn the hard way. Uh, in my case, I think it was a BC-348. It's a real big uh, aircraft receiver. And a guy sent me one that had a mouse nest in it. He said he wasn't sure. It had a mouse nest in it. It was reeked. It was soaking wet in mouse urine and I call I emailed him and he gave me my money back and it went in the garbage and then the next one I got uh, I paid like $200 for it and it's it's basically uh, museum quality I and I, I recapped that radio got it working oh and it came with the uh, dynamotor which was a very good luck the guy was really nice he said that after he sold the one to me and he opened it up before he shipped it he noticed the uh, the dynamo was really scratched up because I noticed the radio I got didn't match the radio in the pictures, and then he explained it all. He put a little note in the radio. And he says I gave you a better one, and he did, and I got it all working. But I like this radio because I can move this radio around. The BC three four eight super overkill. It's got all these bands on it that you're not going to use. In my case, I at night before I go to bed, I I put the uh, the eighty meter hams on. And uh, I listen to them. Or in some cases, I'll put Radio Havana Cuba on, which is around six megacycles. Uh, uh, there's also some U.S. stations that uh, transmit rock and roll uh, 
on 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 uh, around around six mega cycles, you know. And uh, I have the other one, and this one too. This is a this is one that does from six to nine. Here's I want to look at the dial here. I know they're black and the it, the lighting is from behind, but you know there's no light built into these, you know. But there's a big nut on here, and uh, see I can m loosen mine up. But after you loosen this nut up, uh, you got to wiggle this off because there's a pin, and it's only held in with some with, with glue. It's not held in with epoxy. Back in those days, there was no epoxy, and I've never seen one where they screw up with the IFs. The IFs always seem to be uh, the correct ones. And if you get the really good um, uh, manual on these radios, it has all the manuals in one in one PDF file. And it was very helpful. And each one of these IFs is different. It's not the way they're tuned. It's the distance between the two coils inside uh, would be the, um, the inductance. In other words, uh, how close it, uh, it's wider. This is number one, second IF, third IF. Uh, as, as you go up in, in, um, in the IFs, the two coils inside get further apart, and that makes it more narrow. But these, these radios are barn door wide, but it makes it, it's still a fun radio to play with. In my case, it bothered me that it's barn door wide. How could I make it more narrow? You can't use 455 IFs on it because it's um, uh, 1.415 IF. It's not a 455, but then I saw that people were using this BC453 uh, as a Q5er, and then I said, well, how can I get this radio to talk to this radio? And it turned out to be second IF, uh, 12BE6. I covered this in my other videos, and uh, it converts this wacky uh, 1.415 IF into, and originally it was 455, in this case, it's 415 using a one kilohertz crystal, and then uh, you can pick it up on this. All right, it was a, it's like I said, this would have been really good 70 years ago, but I did it, I built it, I designed it, got it to work just for the I won't say giggles, it was a, uh, a challenge for myself. I wanted to challenge myself, and I had all the parts. I said, let me go for it. You know, but I really enjoyed making these power supplies. You know, and most of the time I don't even have the covers on them. I think that's it. All right, that's it.